Everybody, happy Saturday! Uh, welcome to the live stream. Uh, so uh, today we're going to work on some uh, some different embeddings for IP adapters. So this is kind of something that I've been putting into the community area on YouTube for people who are helping out the channel, and I kind of wanted to cover those because I think it's something that we really don't talk about, and there's a fantastic capability in there. Uh, so I kind of wanted to cover that. Uh, so it's it's uh, on YouTube here, up in the uh, member area where it says community on my channel. You'll notice that there's a bunch of stuff in here. And these are members only posts and I put them in there fairly often. They include all the workflows and and so on and as well as tips and tricks and stuff that I learn at work here. So uh, if you want to uh, join the channel, that'd be fantastic. Obviously, you saw the long list of people at the beginning. Uh, so that's really, um, really helpful. You guys are, are keeping the channel alive and I appreciate you so much. Uh, so today, today we're going to talk about IP adapters for things. So uh, this is the base SDA scale workflow that I use all the time. Again, this is also in the community area. I should probably relist it at some point because it's been out there a while uh, and there's nothing special. Yeah, by the way, I didn't have my camera on today. So I was just like, you know what? <laughs> I just don't feel like looking at the camera and being all awkward today. So it's just going to, we're just going to do it the easy way. Um, so yeah, so you don't have to stare at my, the side of my head. I can move my camera so that you guys can actually like, I'm looking at the camera most of the time. Uh, we'll figure that out at some other point. Uh, so anyway, I have downloaded some uh, new models today. As you, so, as you know, I don't tend to use a lot of models outside of the base models, but I grabbed this new uh, Dream Shaper one here, and uh, I think there's a new Juggernaut one in here as well. But you see, I don't I don't use a lot of these. I, I have a lot of Loras as well, but I don't tend to use them. Um, I don't know. We, we uh, try and do things very natively with the base. Obviously, Stability's goal is to produce a, a great you know base model, and then let people train it and, you know, turn it into whatever you need to turn it into. So obviously attaching a lot of LoRa's and using a lot of other checkpoints doesn't work out real well for that goal. Uh, so you tend to find that I, I tend to keep things somewhat pristine uh, and work with the base model. So I can obviously test it and know how it's going to work. Uh, so anyway, what we're using today is uh, just this base workflow. I have changed the default prompt here. I saw this one the other day and I really liked this one. Uh, so rather than taking one artist and having that artist kind of freaking out because, you know, we're doing stuff that looks like their stuff, it's a mix of a bunch of artists. And, and I like to do this because obviously this artist combination does not exist. So these images should be unique. And then no one can say, well, that looks like my work because it doesn't. It's a smash up of a bunch of people um, whose stuff I like. Uh, so we're going to do that. Uh, as far as the rest of these settings go, 
Um, I didn't change these yet, but we'll probably just use the uh, the GPU version of the 2MSDE here. And the schedule we'll, we'll use uh, Mr. Karras, who works for NVIDIA, actually, as a researcher. I wonder where these names come from. Uh, those two, those, this one I know, and then obviously Euler, which is how this is pronounced, by the way. It's not Euler. Euler uh, was a mathematician from know, like the 1500s or 1400s. Really in person. And we obviously still use a lot of his stuff today. Uh, so pretty interesting there. Anyway. So let's get rolling. Let's just run one prompt here. Let's get this thing loaded and see what happens. Looks like I disconnected this accidentally. Let's try that again. See what happens. Now obviously, uh, before you do all this stuff, the first thing you want to do is make sure you update Comfy. So go into your manager, click on the update all button, and then restart. So if you're sitting there going, wow, none of this stuff works for me, this is probably the reason why. I say that every time, and yet somebody will post something. It's like, it doesn't work for me. And somebody will say, hey, did you... Did you do a fetch up, a fetch, you know, update all and then restart? And oh, no, I didn't do that. Okay. Oh, there you go. Uh, so I'm trying, obviously trying to keep these safe for work. So you notice that in the negative prompt here, we have night safe for work nude. Uh, this hands negative prompt thing is something that someone posted on Reddit. And I don't know if it actually works or not, but um, 18th century. There you go. Uh, and uh, the horror one is actually a really interesting one, too. We used to use uh, creepy as another one, but horror, uh, things like this uh, tend to be good negative prompts. If you're trying to create something beautiful, this is a good blanket term. And as of the things that I like to use down here are blanket terms. Uh, so I think those work out pretty well. And obviously, this uh, juggernaut model uh, or the Mohawk model, I'm not sure about the juggernaut model, does contain not safe for work content. So we got to be careful. Otherwise, it's going to put nipples on everything. I don't need. No one needs nipples on a toaster, right? Uh, so you see, this is the style that it's producing. And I thought this was really interesting. This seemed like it was uh, really kind of free form. It's a nice smash up of uh, some of the different uh, artist, I don't know, call it stylizations. Uh, and I really, I really like this. So this is kind of where we, what we started with. But I want to talk about IP adapters today. Uh, let's talk about, first of all, like what's the goal with these things. So let me go and find what I'm talking about here so you understand it. Sorry, it's off the other screen here. It's my Comfy, and I'm going to use input. So in my input here of Comfy, you'll notice that I have all these IP adapter files. And I've been putting these, by the way, in the community area too. So I plan to give these away over time. I keep creating new ones. These are based on paintings I have made, by the way. So uh, they're, they're unique. They're something that you can only get from me because they're stuff that I have made. What's the what's the deal with those? Well, the idea here is that if we if we continue to queue this prompt and randomize it, you're going to find that uh, even though it's set to random, they they're going to be kind of similar, uh, and they shouldn't be similar. They should be a lot more unique each time. Uh, but it looks like the same girl, and it's um, I don't know, it's just kind of the same thing. This is this is just something that happens when you use one of these models. Uh, chronic forgetfulness is something that can occur in an overtrained checkpoint. Now, it does do beautiful work. Obviously, it's doing what we want it to do, but we're going to end up with kind of the same thing over and over again. I want to really kind of shake that up so that I get a lot more variety from each prompt. Now, I'm not talking about just like adding a random variable into the prompt. I want to actually have it so the prompt is the same, but the variability of the image is what's happening. So let's let's talk about the IP adapter. So obviously, I just typed the word IP adapter. And uh, by the way, this list got a lot shorter because that long list of models was removed from the search thing. So whatever node was doing that, thank you for fixing it. I thought Comfy did it and I sent him a text. I'm like, dude, thanks for fixing it. He goes, yeah, I didn't get a chance to look at it yet. So <laughs> there you go. That worked out all right. Uh, so here's the base IP adapter node, right? And you guys are probably familiar with this. If you aren't, um, you can see where it fits. And this is one of the reasons why I prefer uh, Comfy over Automatic 1111 is you actually learn why things work the way they work or where they fit, this fits in here, right? It sits in the model, right in front of the model before it goes off into the rest of this workflow. And uh, Randy says uh, IP adapter is his favorite thing. Yeah, this is this is the way to take and add a little bit of pizzazz that you know what you want into the image. And I just think this is probably one of the coolest things. And Mateo did a fantastic job taking the 10 cent technologies here and turning him into comfy nodes. So uh, by the way, he has a great uh, YouTube that he's trying to get going. So go check him out. <coughs> nice guy too. We we uh, had a chance to team up on the, the openart.ai competition and judge as a team. That was pretty cool. Um, so all right. So here's your IP adapter and you can see what it's doing. It allows you to say how much weight the images we're going to have in here. And you do is you load an image into this thing. Um, 
and it would use this image to uh, augment, you know, your prompt. Let me go find an image, by the way. I wasn't thinking about putting an image in here, and I'm like, hmm, let's grab, let's grab this one. And uh, so, yeah. So this this style of this this kind of watercolorish quick art is something I really enjoy. So, so we're going to use this image here. Now, uh, obviously, I'm saying, how much weight do I want this to have? If I give it 100% weight, uh, they're going to be very similar to this. You know, the center position, the face, the, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then noise is how much it's going to add, obviously, additional noise. But we've got to be careful here because the prompt is going to be pretty much ignored because the weight is so high. So you want to bring this down. And you can scrub, by the way, on almost any of these fields in case you're thinking, well, you just always got to click and type. That's not true. You can actually scrub in here. Um, if you lower this weight, you do want to add some noise, typically. I think this makes it more interesting. Um, and there are a few different weight types, but we're just going to leave it on original for, for this, this time. And then there's start at and end at. This is one of the reasons that I love the advanced control nets, is the ability to stop or start the influence of this image at a certain part, part, part of the rendering. So we can start from the very beginning and, and go all the way to the end, for example. Uh, so this, this art influence will be the entire image. Or we could say, you know what? Kind of do your own thing, but then kick in at a certain point in the uh, generation. Sorry, my phone is going off. And then you can end it at a certain point as well. So this combination of, of settings I really like. All right, so let's just see what this looks like so you can kind of get the idea. Oh, I got to hook it up first. Duh. I'm getting all excited about showing it to you. So if we go up here and just drag these off, you can see that it's going to let you pretty much load in these things. Now, here's where this gets interesting is depending on your model down here and uh, which clip vision you're using. So we'll use clip vision, load clip vision loader. Um, you can see here that we have the, the VIT in here. This, this VIT means there are... Our, model uh, should be one that has the VIT in it. So if we're focusing on faces, you want to use the face one. Um, you can see this one's for SDXL and these are for the other ones. Uh, so let's just stick with, let's do this plus face one and see how that goes. Um, make sure though that it has the VIT in it if you're using uh, the clip vision that has VIT in it. Otherwise, it's going to throw an error. And if it throws an error, we'll just change the, the model. It means there's something wrong with one of the models. It's almost always the problem. But this is a four gig model, right? So this is going to take about maybe a gig and a half of, of active VRAM when you're running it. Uh, so we're going to try and actually eliminate this uh, so we can actually have more RAM to do stuff with this. VRAM issue is one that plagues all of us, obviously. Uh, so let's see how this works. And by the way, this is set to preview. I should probably hit this to save at some point. <clears throat> there we go. And you can see the influence of this image now on, on that, right? From what we started with, it's still there. You can still see that stylization, but it's starting to add in some of this paint drippy kind of stuff. And that's pretty neat. That's one of the things that I really love about, about this. Now, there's some, wing, some things we can do to improve this, though. Uh, the, the way that this is cropped by this node and by the, the whole technology uh, can create some awkward situations. So Mateo actually added a uh, prep for clip vision in here somewhere. I don't know. Prep. Prep for clip vision. We'll have to go find it. Down at the bottom here. There we go. Prep for prep image for clip vision. We just want to use this in the middle. It's really wait. And you're saying to it, where do you want this to crop? Where's the face or the thing you're trying to use? We're just gonna say it's in the center. Because that's so you see the piece that we want. But what this is going to do is what we're actually really after here is this Lancos interpolation. This is the part of this that is an improvement. Uh, so just using this, even if you have square images, to use this clip vision encoder here, or the uh, prepare for clip vision, uh, is very helpful. So I would highly encourage you to always use this thing. Uh, it's just going to get a better, a better result. In fact, let's go back and let's use the last seed. So let's take the exact same seed here. And let's set this to fixed so it doesn't change. Let's see what the difference is. Uh, so I'll remove that. So we've got that one. Just We'll just save that one and do this again. We can kind of see what changed. You know, it's a different weight interpolation, uh, interpolation methods, uh, clip and text and code node have a significant role on the image. Is there any way to play with that? 
day and comfy. Um, maybe I'll have to talk about that uh, a little bit more in detail. Let's we'll see what, what exactly you're looking for. All right, so you can see here uh, the difference. We have obviously a difference between them. Now, is it better or worse? Well, it's supposed to be better. Um, I think I just like the stylization of this one better. Uh, but it's uh, this is this is I think uh, closer to what the encoder is looking for. Um, who knows? But <laughs> it's encouraged that you use that. Um, I think that it's turned out. Uh, I, again, I like the styles of parts of this better, um, but I think the face is better in this. One. So, uh, and I think that's really the goal here with with what we're doing. But anyway, if we want to use more than one image here, because we want to uh, uh, have have more than one artistic influence, we can actually use more than one image. And obviously, we only have one box here. And I covered this uh, in my other video on on uh, IP adapters. But there's a batch image node. So, um, and this allows you to connect more than one of these. So if we just take in duplicate this and we used another one, then we could do this type of situation. So you can change the amount of sharpening if you're losing a blurry image. But this batch allows you to obviously take more than one. And we can we can duplicate this. Uh, so one batch can feed into another batch and, and so on. And, and these are all, this will work just fine, although this is kind of goofy because, you know, you know what I'm trying to show is you daisy chain these things together. Um, that's one way to do it. Now, this was the first method that came out when when uh, when these nodes were, were initially brought over. And this works great. Um, the issue is that these models all have the same weight, right? Or these images all have the same weight. This whatever weight this is, all these images use the exact same one, uh, which is not as handy. So there are some other nodes in here, and I'm getting to my point here. Uh, when we uh, we start bringing these in, you'll start seeing what I'm talking about. Um, we have this, um, I don't wanna show I encoded, there we go. So this node and this node Kind of do the same thing right but this one you notice that it's a little bit different it's taking ip adapter but there's no clip vision model here anymore and the model and the attention mask the attention mask uh is something that was added a couple weeks ago i need to do a whole new video on these things because there's so much of this has changed um it's pretty neat but the, the thing about this that we like is the embeds part so if we pull the embeds out we can see that there's some other options in here this encoder is new and this allows you to take, again, four images so we can you know, hook as many in here as we need to. And this, obviously, this, this node would go away at this point. We would be using this one. So this one would sit here in the middle. And it's doing all the driving. And you notice that it does have an overall weight just like the other one did. It has very, very similar settings here. However, the clip vision, well, let's change this stuff. So the IP adapter is still here, but the clip vision one has moved and now it's over here. Now, what's interesting is, and this is the part of the that we're getting to here, is that if you're using these same images all the time and you know the weights that you want and the noises that you want and you're really happy with them constantly, you can actually save this entire thing into one image or one file. And that's what these, these little IP adapter files are here. Uh, now, notice that we do have an image in here that is not an IP adapter one. And we're going to talk about this in a second because this, this can become problematic. But I have a really kind of interesting solution for you that I think you'd be like, oh, well, that's interesting. Uh, but if we look at the size of these things, they're tiny. They're 11 kilobytes. So the image that we used as our point of departure here that I dragged in is 1700. So much bigger uh, and obviously takes time to process. But... What's interesting is when you once you have these embeds created, you don't have to even load this clip vision encoder anymore, which saves you again that gig and a half of RAM, which is huge. So if we do embeds, let's get rid of this, but we do embeds and we do load embeds here. Now it's going and saying, which file did you want? Oh, here's all my IP adapters. So you can see all this stuff up here is no longer required. Now we have just this. That eliminates all that RAM. Okay, so you're like, okay, well, how did you how did you create this thing? Um, how did you make this thing? Well, there's actually another node for that as well. So if we go back here, use that handy undo feature. I'm so glad they added that into the product file. My God, that was just a pain. 
<laughs> but now it's better, right? You can take these embeds and from here you can do save embeds. And this will allow you to simply save that and it'll put it in your output file under this embeds folder. And then you can go in and use it. However, when you use them, you want to put them in your input folder. So you're gonna have to, to cut them and paste them into here in order to do that. Nah, it's a little wonky. Uh, at some point we'll get better file management, but just note that once you do this, you don't need to keep these things around anymore. So you can get rid of these, right? And I'm just gonna get rid of these. And I'll keep this one just so we have some reference. Actually, we'll probably use this image because I like it. So what the, what these are, are these are all, again, all based on paintings that I have done over the years. So if we run this, except for this first one here, this is based on, uh, I think an image that I really liked. It was kind of steampunky. Uh, so let's just start with that one. So let's take this steampunky. Let's leave it at 100%, actually. Leave it at 100%. That way it'll pretty much ignore the prompt and you can kind of see what, it's, what it looks like. And I think these are pretty fun. Let me check your comments here. Oh, what are we doing? Okay, so the, the issue is, is telling me my tensors are the wrong. Uh, this plus face model is not the one that was probably used originally uh, when you created that embedding. So you will need to keep track of it. I think it's this one here. Let's try it. See if it spits up blood. If it does, we'll just change the model again. Yeah. The joy of of uh, new technology, right? Not a lot of documentation, stuff breaks every day. Here we go. Just gotta figure out which which IP adapter model I used. So it's using that steampunk embedding to influence the image. Yeah, that's pretty neat. I'm happy with that. Uh, but if I run this again, I'll say we make this seed now a random. By the way, I love this global seed. It's really cool. But uh, as you saw my hand well, the live stream last week, uh, this was what was causing the problem because it had the seed for the new hands as well. And it created kind of a double effect, which made them all crunchy. And that's not exactly what we wanted. By the way, if you're enjoying the stream, please take a moment to click the like button. We've got um, it's like uh, about 90 people on and only 19 likes. So I would really appreciate that like the virtual clapping, if you like it. If you don't like it, well, then don't do it. But I really appreciate that. All right, so we fixed the seed here. Um, let's see what this looks like, and then we'll do it again, because obviously the uh, this is from the previous seed. So we'll click it again. And even though we're running a different seed each time, we're getting very similar images, right? And that's fine. But again, I want something different. That's where this these embeds come in handy. So if I change this to the second embed here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna lower the weight on these two because they're right now they're they're a hammer, but um, put it like this, and we'll add some noise. Actually, all that noise and stuff is already is already part of this, so already done. Oh, wow. Hey, thanks, Peanut. Design GTS gifted five memberships. So five random people in the audience all get memberships. Well, thank you. So you guys now have access to the community area for a month. Go and grab all those files and all those things I've uploaded, all those graphs. And thanks, Peanut Design, for that. That was really awesome of you. Thank you so much. That's awesome. All right. So there we go. We have something different because the painting that this IP adapter used is different uh, than the other one. And they think, okay, that's great. Uh, I have to go and change these IP adapters every darn time. Uh, well, there's actually a way to do this, which is going to be kind of uh, interesting. I think this is one of those things that's going to make you go, well, I didn't know you could do that. Everyone talks about the primitive node, right? So you've got this primitive node, utils, primitive. By the way, I have a lot of nodes in here. Sorry about that menu. I hope someday somebody writes something that allows us to manage this train wreck. Because seriously, test tests. Ugh. As you're killing. Yes, thank you so much, Pina. That was awesome of you. Awesome. All right, so we have this primitive node. What can we do with it? Well, the primitive node can be, you know, obviously we use it normally for numbers or different things like that. But what's interesting is we can use it for this adapter name. It's like, well, what's the use of that? So let's go and convert embeds to input, right? And if I if I pull this out and put it into this primitive you notice that it has the name of the adapter file and so on, but now I can change this to randomize. 
So now every time I roll this, it's going to pick a different random one. So let's get rid of actually this node here. And I'm going to change this to fixed. So now we'll use, I'm going to just change it to like a nine or something. Like Nine's my favorite number. So we'll just go a nine fixed. We'll get the same picture every time, right? In fact, we can do one without this being enabled first. Let's just roll it with just the standard picture and see what we get. I don't think I need this image more. Do a little comparison. So this is the standard seed number nine of this prompt. Take and we'll we'll have this as our point of reference here. I'll just disconnect it so that it doesn't override it. All right now we'll go back and we'll enable this one. Now if we run this, let's run a batch of say four images and let it run. Now we're using a fixed seed over here, but this is set to randomize. So we should end up with four very, very different images. Again, they're all being influenced by the painting uh, that I have used to as the point of departure there. I'll see. Yeah, that was really awesome, man. I think uh, I think that's only happened one other time. So that was very cool. Painted design, thank you again. Okay. Well, it looks like it's only randomizing uh, once then. So let's let's take this. We'll call that good. We'll call it a success. Um, but let's go ahead and drop this down, I guess, to one. I was expecting it to redraw this random each time, uh, but it looks like it's not doing that. So let's go ahead again, fixed, and see what it produces. It should produce a random, again, a random one from this folder every time. Yeah, I think it's the same one. It looks like it's the same one. Interesting. And disappointing because this should choose any one of these in here every time so it's set to randomize let's choose increment and be more obvious right yeah it incremented hmm, interesting wonder why randomize didn't do anything who knows i did uh report a bug to come feed this morning too with that node that i found but it might just be me using it wrong but i'll show you what the bug is and you Tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Mohammed says uh, that uh, their credit cards are closer to paying U.S. currency in Egypt, and he feels so lucky to win such a membership. Well, that's very awesome. And yeah, that is very cool. I, I love the giving nature of a lot of people. This is really cool. All right, so we got three super unique looks already. Uh, let's just choose one of these so we have it represented. Even though the seed is... Chain is, is fixed on this every time. This one should increment again if I hit it, right? Yep, it does. So now increment works, but random wasn't working. Who knows why? But I've used randomize there before and it's been fine. So not really sure what the deal is there. Um, you wouldn't have any inside knowledge as to when the Stability AI folks might release the next version of Stable Diffusion. Uh, no, I don't actually. That's not my... Um, I had the I had that one. Can I, damn it! No, I lost one of them. Uh, no, that's not my uh, not what I do. So unfortunately, uh, I don't know the timing on release or anything. I do get to test new models, you know. So I have a lot of models that aren't released, uh, but those are test versions, and oftentimes they're just experiments and certain things. Obviously, it's a lot of research involved. There's always something that they're pushing, some new boundary, uh, and I'm I, again, I'm always excited about what we're doing. We always have so much stuff coming. Uh, but when they release them, I have no idea. I mean, there's so many models we have that probably could be released, uh, but for different reasons, strategy wise or, you know, technology or they've already surpassed it, which is usually what happens. They just choose not to to release that model because it's already we already have a better one that's in the oven. Uh, obviously, they do take months to make because they obviously have to bake from the beginning. Uh, but uh, yeah, so it's pretty neat. Maybe batching doesn't refer to the uh, IP adapter for each image. Yeah, the, yeah, that's what I was assuming, but um, it's working with this. So let's just try two with this and see if this works uh, because I'm not sure why that didn't work, but it should go back and choose a random one for every every one of these. A vector image model. Yeah, you can get uh, an SVG. There's an SVG 
uh, node I have seen out there. I haven't used it, um, but I know there is one that exists. Anyway, so the the issue we have here, and I ran into this, is you'll notice that we have all these IP adapters, but we have one here that is a PNG. What if it picks that here? Because it's going to increment to that eventually, then this is going to throw an error. So this control list down here is what you can, you can use for that. So in here we could put, uh, I think this is the, um, this is the name, the, the dot on the file. Let me double check that. Uh, uh, I P A E T I P A D B T. There you go. And just start and end it with the backslash there uh, for, so it knows it's, uh, it's regex basically. And now it should pick only files with this. Uh, so you can leave them all in there and not use, uh, not, not uh, run into any of those. Let's try that just to see what happens. Let's see if this actually picked two this time. And if it did a random, no, it did not do random. So that's very interesting. So it doesn't go all the way back up here to randomize each time. Um, pity. We could probably force that, but uh, like, for example, if we choose a random number, there's a random number node that will fire off every time that can force this to reload. I've done that before. Um, so if we do, this again that should have incremented and it did not and this is the bug I found uh, I when I put something here to control this it does not seem to allow use of this control after generate so I reported this as a bug if you leave this blank it should work just fine yep uh, but if you put anything in there it should it should function uh, but it was working uh, but now it isn't so who knows what's going on uh, can you do a session on how to use comfy UI to do restore and colorize uh, photography workflow Sure. There's actually a um, a workflow from the openart.ai competition that would go and recolor old movies, which I think is one of the ones we picked as a winner. Uh, at least Mateo and I were really impressed with it. it. It did a fantastic job of not altering the image so much, like even though it did recolorize it. I thought that was really interesting. But anyway, so you get the idea here is that we're getting very different images every time because of this embeddings. So it's only an 11K file. We've used this primitive node here. And I want to try randomize again because this should work. Click randomize. Yeah, now it's working. Who knows what the problem was? I am going to delete this um, this file here though so it doesn't break things. But now every time we do this, we should end up with a different, different look even though we're using the exact same seed. Obviously, if we release the seed to randomize now so that we can you know, test this thing like we would normally test everything else. This would follow the copy and not stay with you. Now we should get violently different images because the seed here is allowed to change and it's going to randomize the embedding every time. And this is kind of like when I set myself up to do a bunch of images and I go to bed and I come up, you know, the next morning and look and see what what's rendered. Uh, I don't want, you know, the same exact girl, just slightly different poses each time. I want a completely different look. Uh, so what I'm going to do for you guys is I'm going to I'm going to start putting more of these into the community area here on YouTube for you because you guys have been helping me out. I mean, I, I can't tell you how much it means to me the support you guys have given the channel here. And uh, I obviously want to reward you for that. Uh, so I'll, I'll be releasing more of these. It's already a couple I posted a, m a couple months ago, actually. But I will continue to work on that and uh, up the uh, number I'm giving you guys. And again, they're all based on paintings I have done. Uh, so they are not ones you're going to find on Civet or anywhere else. They're, they're for me. Uh, obviously, they're keep them in the family. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> they're uh, they're ones that are for us, right? Um they're ours. I'm sharing. But that's your reward for helping me out with the channel. There we go. So I thought this was this was something that was important to cover. Obviously, we can change some of the artists around here if we wanted to. Um, obviously, I don't want to try and copy. Uh, I don't want to try and copy a person's styles exactly. But if we do, let's say we do. This is one option. So these three together are one option. Let's do a pipe in here and let's throw in the same ones, but let's replace uh, Ross Tran with um, HR Geiger sample. And let's replace this with um, 
Uh, Seb McKinnon. And we'll do one more here. A pipe. Paste him in again. Let's get rid of Carney Griffiths this time. And run with Frostrant in Anna and uh, Peter Warbacher. Uh, he was actually on the um, the stream over on uh, Mid Journey the other day, and I joined in there because uh, I've I've been a patron of his for years now, and I have some enameled pins he sent out a long time ago, uh, so that was pretty fun. That, and he's like, "Oh, dude, you have like." I have like three of decks of his cards. He's like, well, you've been a patron a long time. So that was kind of, that was kind of cool. I'm uh, sorry, catching up on the comments here. Uh, love your content. wondering if you've got a video that builds out an incredible airship in your, in your thumbnails. Uh, I do. I, I, I want to say that I did do one of those. Um, it was an older one though, but um, yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to go look. I love doing airship ones. I think it's just really fun. Uh, you need an SVG vector format. Yeah, I agree. Uh, when I got done doing the Catan board, by the way, the Catan board is done. I did not do a video on that or uh, show that uh, to everybody yet. I was going to do one more video to kind of show it for any of you who are interested in this. Uh, I know it's not related to Comfy UI so much, but uh, at, at least at all. Uh, but yeah, this, I did a, a custom Catan board I made from scratch. Um, I actually posted it on... Um, on Facebook and someone said that it was a, a mid journey prompt. <laughs> Alan Thoris, welcome to this channel as a sponsor. Thank you, sir. Uh, so yeah, this was a Catan board that I made and, and I used uh, dream studio. And, well, mostly dream studio to kind of, and I put into, I put hexagonal game tile uh, and didn't put like forest or things. Charles Hagen, welcome to the channel. Awesome. You guys are awesome today. We're like, we got seven, seven members. Uh, Again, thanks, thanks so much uh, to uh, Peanut Design GTS for the five memberships. That was very nice. But uh, yeah, so this design just got done. But it's really nice to use AI as inspiration for things. It's not that I could have used that directly into a um, into a, an SVG file, but it certainly helped me with the design part of it. And that's the part of I think the most powerful part of AI is helping us make things it's an idea machine to me that's the most important part of it um you know canceling your your subscription because <laughs> of how great my videos are <laughs> that's awesome man uh i i actually haven't used my journey i use it every so often um but I, I i probably should cancel my membership i really don't use it that much i do like the product and don't get don't get me wrong i don't think it's a bad product at all um, I, I'm, first of all, I find it a bit restrictive. There's some of the stuff that I want to be able to do every so often I trip up on a word and I totally get the safety thing. So I can't fault them on that. Uh, it just, it's just a little frustrating, obviously, but, uh, got to keep the world safe. So I completely get that. All right. So what I'm done, what I'm going to go back to this here for a second is, uh, oh, what does the pipe do? All right. Let's talk about that for a second. So I did throw this in here. This there, by the way, there's like 10 different people now who have a pipe was driving me a little bit nuts. Uh, before you make a node, see if someone else has made the same node. This basic pipe puts all these five things into one line so I can run it all the way across the screen. Like if I'm way across the graph and I can do from basic pipe and now I have access to them over here instead of running five lines all the way across the screen. That's all it's doing. It's replacing the bus more or less. If you're using a bus or you play a lot of factorial, then you know what those things are. Uh, it's just, just makes things a little bit neater. Um, anyway, so in here you can see I have this these three people, there's a pipe, these three people, and then a pipe, and then these. So it's going to pick randomly each time one of those. Now, again, if I don't change my seed, let's, again, I'm taking things so that um, we don't change all our variables at once, right? We should get unique images each time because the IP adapter is still in place, right? Even if this fixed seed is the same, and now it's going to change and pick one of those three random artists each time. Uh, how do I make these workflows available? Yeah, they're in the community area. So uh, Alan and Charles and the five people who got the gifts today, as well as all the other members, get access to those. Uh, they're in the community area on YouTube. Again, this it's uh, it looks like this. You just go to my channel and you click on community. And they're all in here. All the different workflows. There's a bunch of different uh, like competitions. Uh, you guys got early notice on this because when they announced me as a judge, I went and said, hey, guys, start pondering. Uh, this was the uh, some of the competitions for uh, coming up with depth maps and then giving you guys the depth maps. You have a chance to uh, make some different scenes with it. I'm going to try and make some competitions like that 
uh, going forward. I think there's a lot of fun stuff uh, to be had there. Um, what about the pipe character and the prompt to separate the artist? Does that do anything? Yes, it, it separates the options. So the pipe is saying this, this is one whole option here, everything between the curly braces. So this is my variable, but it's only allowed to pick things between the pipes. So, um, oops, I put a pipe here, comma, should have been a comma, because uh, I want these three together. So these three together, these three together, and these. The pipe is used to separate options within the curly braces. So nothing else is changing. So we should end up with unique picture. There we go. Do one more. Oh, one more. I lie. We're going to do a few more, but it, it, it's a fine old Saturday. May, oh, yeah. Make sure you like the video. <laughs> yeah, there's some haters out there. I just don't get like I, I when I watch a video I like, I always click like just because I shouldn't have to you, know, you shouldn't have to say it like in this day and age. You should know that's like the way you clap. Like when you go to a website and you you click on an ad. You ever do that? You go to a website you really like, you click on an ad because they get revenue from that ad. It helps them. It helps the advertiser and it helps the platform. That's your way of clapping. This is awesome. I love this one. There's a happy accident for you. And quit. I was just checking to hit the save image. It is sweet. I like that one. And again, same seed for the girl. She's not what's changing here. All we're doing is changing the artist by uh, one of those three. And then we're changing that embedding. And if we let this thing run overnight, obviously we're going to end up with a lot of looks, but we didn't change the seed on the girl. Um, I just think that's really, really cool. This variability is one of the things that I pick I pick apart um, in our process or our workflows. Like I want variability to be uh, much, much higher. So that's beautiful too. I really like that one. So these are kicking out some nice one. And you can kind of tell this embedding on this on this one here and the embedding on this one here are probably the same because they have the same uh, color, uh, color grading, colorization. All the paintings that I uploaded for this um, are ones that I made. Let me see if I can find one for you so I can give you an idea. These are all ones that I made uh, from scratch over the years. Paint these things. Here's one. Uh, so this is one. So this is all, all painted. And you can see there's like there's actually a texture with it. And this is a very big file. Um, I think it's about it's eight or 10,000 pixels wide. Um, hey, all right. We have another person. Who, look, oh, David West. Welcome as a supporter. Um, the uh, anyway, so these textures. These are what I use for the embeddings. So each one of these, you can tell if this one fires off, um, how it's going to impart this to the image. It'd be the same as if we took the IP adapter, connected the image of that texture to this, loaded in the clip, the clip vision model, which again is four gig, and then we're able to save that embedding. So right now we're dealing with something that's only 11, um, 11 ish. <laughs> Uh, 11-ish um, ki uh, kilobytes in size, so it's tiny. Now, another thing we could do too is here's this weight. We can actually randomize that weight. There is a randomize node. Uh, there's a random int, random float. We can use this, and we can say the minimum. We'll say the minimum is 30%, and the maximum would say be 70% or 70. Let's do 0.3 actually. 0.3 and 0.7 and we can connect we can say we want to change and convert the weight to input and then connect this like so now rather than just being 50 percent every time um it will between 30 and 70 percent uh, for the that embedding that texture how much um, it's going to impart and here i actually like this one so it's a pity that i'm overriding it but again that's the beauty of comfy is you can always just grab the image and drag it back in here um, if you like it Same seed. A little bit different weight. So I use this ran these these random values uh, quite often. Um, the ability to kind of like we could do this for the start and end as well. Uh, so the start, uh, we could let this start. Let's say let's get it. Let's let it get thirty percent of the way through making whatever it wants to make. And then we're going to pick up and apply this IP adapter at the end at a random weight. Here we're getting a little bit more of a full body shot out of it. Interesting. And remember that this is still a fixed seed. 
So that entire pose was created by a shifting of the IP adapter to one of those embeddings, as well as a shifting of the artist. That also shows you that the artist, let's see, uh, like Peter Morbacher, for example, doesn't do close-up portraits that I've ever seen. They're almost always full body. Uh, so that one might have been one that is a Peter Morbacher one because, again, he doesn't do close-up portraits. Uh, so maybe that influenced that uh, the type of pose that came out of it. All right, so we'll throw this over here. Now we're going we're gonna to look at this one. We're going to actually watch this one bake because, again, we had this kicking in 30% of the way through so it's going to start creating whatever it darn well wants to create for the first 30% of the steps. And then the IP adapter is going to kick in. So we might see something pretty unique and different. And then all of a sudden it'll snap in when this line reaches about a third of the way through. Uh, this is really handy too when you're doing a, uh, a depth map for uh, an image where you don't want the image to be so tight to the depth map, but you want some creativity. For example, if we give it a, a sphere and we want leaves to be on the sphere we want it to kind of use the prompt in a willy-nilly way before it forces the depth map down maybe i'll do that as a live stream at some point too because i think that's pretty so it started doing whatever it wanted to do before it kicked in and applied the ip adapter let's go and remove a little bit of variability here let's get rid of this go back to having the weight be part of the widget and we'll get rid of this and we'll put this in like like scent. and we'll start it at we'll start at 50 percent actually let's do this let's go 100 percent weight but we're not going to do it for the for the first half but we'll do it for the second half see what happens i just don't write that We watch the uh, green bar at the top. We can tell when it gets to halfway. So it's going to do whatever it wants based on the artist we have. And when it gets about halfway, then the IP adapter is going to kick in and start to enforce that texture painting. She looks very unhappy, doesn't she? <laughs> so this obviously was much more art artist influenced uh, before the texture started to come in. Uh, and again, remember, we're still we're still seed locked on this. We're still using a fixed. Uh, so it's really interesting how much variability we can get out of it. So now if we turn this on and actually randomize the seed here, uh, sorry to be a pain. You missed the beginning of the stream. It will be available later. The workflow available when you finish. Yes, the workflow, David, will be put into the uh, sponsor. So you're a supporter, uh, but the sponsor level and higher that will be in the community area there. And I'll put the graph in. I will actually leave this live stream up for probably the rest of the day. Uh, and maybe part of tomorrow, all the live streams tend to go into the the the, the sponsor area uh, of the channel. It's again, it's it's interesting the challenges of a, as a streamer. What do you give someone for for obviously giving them the hard earned money to help support the the stream? I have to come up with stuff. So it's the all the live streams of who are available to the public, but they eventually all go in there. Um, so that's uh, that's where that lives. So yes, it'll be around, but it won't be around the whole. Uh, uh, let's do, let's change this a little bit. Um, let's do 50% and let's do 30% here. And we'll leave that. I tend to think this setting worked out pretty well. This starting late uh, lets the artist, uh, and the, the kind of the model do some of its magic before we kick in and force it. We could also change the model. Let's change the model. Let's use this. Uh, let's just use the base SDXL. Uh, again, I, I tend to do almost everything with the base models because that's what I do. It's stability, right? Uh, it's we work with the base models. Um, we don't really use community uh, checkpoints and things like that because uh, we can't. You know, they, we don't know how it was trained or what material was used in the training. Um, so it's, uh, from a safety standpoint and just a quality standpoint, we don't want to randomize that and uh, end up with something that's horrific out there. So obviously the uh, it's a business, you know, it's a business first. By the way, if you like the stream, uh, you have a, over 100 people watching now and 68 likes. If you like what you're seeing here, please click the like button. Greatly appreciate that. Okay, so here we go. So it started about 30% of the way through and then started to apply that texture. But now we're at a randomize here for the seed. So we're going to end up with a very varied uh -huh, uh, look each time. And again, you choose, you know, if you're looking for photorealistic, I don't really care for photorealistic. Uh, as a photographer, I can go out and take pictures of people. 
Uh, so if you say, hey, wow, you know, like, it, <laughs> these whole AI girlfriend things make me laugh. I'm like, you know, they actually make real women. You can go out and talk to them. You don't have to like have an AI girlfriend you can go get a real one. There we go. I like artist stuff. And these, these inspire me to paint. It was actually this image up here that inspired this whole thing. I loved this. I did actually a bunch uh, with my wife. Uh, so I went and took my wife. I'm funny. Uh, history over here. Let's see if I can find one. Um, hmm, no, I don't think I have any of those saved for some reason. I might have been using preview and not noticed right away. Uh, but I did a bunch of these with uh, with my wife's face. So because I have a beautiful wife. So it's like, well, fun. And I'm thinking, wow, I want to paint this. I have a giant canvas that hangs behind me in the office here that needs to be repainted. And it's got about an eighth of an inch of paint on it because I painted it so many times. But every so often I get bored at looking at it. I'm just going to make something new and put it on there. Now let me catch up on the comments here real quick. Uh, hey, attempting to get the hand workflow to work. Uh, having fun as a member now. Uh, it's throwing an error uh, on the Juggernaut version three, don't see it install option in the manager. You can use then then just change that. This this checkpoint here doesn't matter. Um, just use whatever you want. I'm using SDXL base. You can use if you don't have the Juggernaut model, which it sounds like you don't. Just use whatever you have. Uh, it's it's it doesn't matter. That hand fix seems to work well with all the models. Um, although stability doesn't support the 1.5 model anymore. Obviously, a lot of people use it because it runs on anything, and it's. Uh, very well trained. Like a lot of people have a lot of models they've made on it. Um, I I actually like 1.5 because, hey, David upgraded. Woohoo. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. All those workflows are in there. Just grab whatever you want. But again, you have to have that model. If you don't have the Juggernaut model, which you can go get, it's over at civet.ai. Um, you can grab that one. I, I, again, I have quite a few, but I don't really use them. Um, I just use, I just, I like an artistic look. Uh, so this is from the base SDXL. Uh, you can obviously tell that the, the Mohawk model has been polished a bit. Uh, we can change this to the Juggernaut model as well. Um, now, again, with these models, I have to be careful on YouTube here because this model is is notoriously not safe for work. Uh, so if you go to the YouTube channel, uh, uh, just go to civet.ai and, uh, and download it. All the models are on there. And they're all free. Uh, so you can grab whatever you want to grab on there. Now, if we click load on this, it's going to take a minute to load. I can't show you civet.ai because it is very not safe for work. Yeah, don't. <laughs> if you log in over there, even if you have the uh, the not safe for work flag unchecked, there's it's just it's just pervasive. It's everywhere. Um, just really weird. Frankly, it's weird. So many waifu models over there. It's like, how many of these do you need? Really? I don't know. And there's some great ones. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I like anime, but uh, apparently not as much as some people do. I think these turned out beautifully. And these are these are things I think I could paint. Like I'm I'm pretty inspired by this artistically that I could go and I could paint something like this. Okay. Nice watercolor. And again, influenced by the IP adapter. Uh, so today I'll do is I will put an embed. Yeah, you're not wrong. Sex does sell. Um, I will put uh an embed out there today for you guys, as well as this graph. I won't put all of these because you probably don't need things in there. Um, but it was showing basically how much variation we get each time by using. So um, I'll put uh, this. This do you need this graph? I'll probably give you this graph just because this is this interesting part here. But this primitive, the randomization in this primitive, is really interesting. Yeah, their site has become an adult site. Yeah, you're not wrong. It's uh. Yeah, it's it's hard to find, you know, the forest for the trees in there now. It's just it's just become so so much porn on there, unfortunately. But uh, you know the the good thing about it is that it obviously that type of imagery does help with anatomy. So obviously the people tend to look better uh, because of it. Uh, your wife is an artist um, of the family. You've always wanted to make art. And you've done a great job of showing how to use these tools to realize that desire. Oh, I appreciate that. Uh, we we haven't talked about this on the channel before. Uh, but there's an application called Krita, uh, K-R-I-T-A. Bring it up here. Well, may I'll do this in a live stream uh, next time. I didn't really plan on doing it today. But uh, if you're not familiar with Krita, Krita is free. Uh, so I think it's just krita.org, I think, 
is the website. And uh, I'm out of date. This is not the newest one. Um, there's a 5.2 that I don't have yet. And I can tell because I know the screen is different. But the thing that's interesting about Krita is Krita has up here AI generation. And this talks to Comfy behind the scene. So if you're in here and you're painting something, you can have Comfy uh, do the interpretation of what it is. So you can type in, you know, or you can, you can create whatever you want and hit generate. And it'll take what you have based on the prompt. And uh, you can be the artist you want to be. Now, this is obviously driving it aggressively with your desires, not so much using just words to guide the image, but actually drawing something and then guiding the image. Uh, so I, th I think I might actually make this into a, uh, a thing that we cover because I, oh, you can't see Krita. Um, sorry, I'm glad you said that. Let me find out why. Um, um Sorry, I'm glad you said that. I would not have known. So here's Krita. And again, it's 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 not like Photoshop so much. It's more like a Corel Painter than anything else. Uh, but you can draw whatever you want to draw, and then you can type in the prompt, and then this uses Comfy in the back end. Uh, so all you just have Comfy open, and then Krita will, will work that way. So it's, it's, um, it's using Comfy to do the actual inference part of this, but... Um, yeah. This is a really great tool, by the way. It's a, a fantastic product, um, but again, it's free. So I would highly recommend you go in there and, and give it a whirl and try it out and uh, and do whatever. But this gives you a chance to be an artist and then have Comfy use your art instead of dragging, you know, saving it, dragging it into an IP adapter and going from there. Uh, this is a much more interesting way to kind of do things. It sounds like you're showing something. Yeah, you, you guys can see it now. I hope. Um, can't you? Yes. Looks. Uh, yes. Looks like you can. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, you, I'm, I'm glad you guys said something. But anyway, um, there you go. Uh, yeah, NVIDIA Canvas is, uh, is th that that's a completely different creature in my mind. This gives you 100% full control. So if you were to drag a picture in here and then paint over it, for example, and then have Comfy take this and augment it additionally, this I think is really fun. So we might do this in a live stream. I'll show you how to set it up. The setup was, was not simple. Um, unfortunately there's, and you can use again, all, all your different Laura's and all your different, um, uh, things can be used in here at whatever strength you want. And you can add different layers as well. Uh, but I'll go over a bunch of that, that stuff, but getting this configured was not, not the simplest thing, uh, because some things don't, um, don't work that great. Looking for a Corel replacement. Oh, your Corel replacement is not this tool. Your Corel replacement would be a uh, rebel five. Right. Or rebel. I think it's up to six now. Rebel would be the tool you want for that. All right. uh, is it up to seven now? It's up to seven. There we go. And I, I actually have an extra license from rebel. Um, maybe I'll have, I'll have to give that away. Maybe um, this tool, which doesn't use AI at all, though. Uh, this tool is nuts. If you're looking for something that is next level painting wise, watercolor on this system is amazing because it'll actually bleed all the colors and stuff. Um, this is your, your replacement for Corel Painter. And I have Corel Painter too. I've, and look at how far this goes down. So it does everything, uh, down to like the, the paper texture. Uh, so it's a pretty, pretty cool application. Um, this is also not very expensive. Um, I think, which is it now it's on sale right now because they're doing a, um, or at least it was, well, it was on sale when I got it. Um, because I've been using it for years. I'm a Corel Painter person as well, but I really have not upgraded that product now in I think three or four years. Corel, I mean, let me give it this way. As far as a company goes, I like that product, but they're also the company that is maintaining WordPerfect. WordPerfect Office. Yes, someone is still maintaining their product. So from a leadership, company leadership perspective, I have to question them. <laughs> like, uh, hey, you got it right? Yeah, there's that one. And then, well, if you're looking for paint, sorry, we're kind of going off on the, on the, on the, uh, weird side today. Art Rage is another really good one. Uh, if you're looking for another painting application, uh, that's an alternative to, um, I don't know what, uh, if you're looking for an alternative to, um, painter, this is another really good one. This is Art Rage. Art Rage is the 35 or well, it might be 60 or 70 bucks. Uh, this again, not an automation doesn't use AI, but, um, this tool is a fantastic painting tool. If you want to you want to learn to paint or, or feel like you're painting, 
I hope I not have the mess, then you the sleep. Um, I, I actually use Rebel more than probably anything else uh, for painting type of uh, workflows uh, or things when I'm trying to make something because it's very satisfying. But I also, I also have paint. I have physical paint everywhere. Obviously, that Catan board, I painted that thing by hand, uh, which took a while, uh, which was a lot of fun. Yeah, Word per they still maintain Word Perfect. Uh, so the people who own Coral Painter also own Word Perfect. So good investment there. But anyway, so uh, I digress. But this um, this is pretty much what I wanted to show today was this use of this embedding. So you know how to make them now. You know how to use them. You know how to randomize them. And then you know how to kind of show their their flexibility in creating the, the largest amount of variety in the images you're creating. So rather than relying on randomize up here to kind of make sure we get something different every time uh, by utilizing those others those other tools in there, we can get more from it. Uh, and I can't, um, yeah, I can't, oh, I can. Okay, I was gonna say, I like to bring back those, those images. Um, but we got a whole lot of variety out of that without even changing the seed of the woman. So that was pretty fun. Uh, Tend to disagree, Corel is doing a great job for illustrators and Corel Draw and Designer, much more practical than Illustrator. Oh no, I, I don't I don't think Corel Draw is a horrible program at all. I own it. Um, but uh, I or so I own Corel Painter. Corel Draw, yes, uh, still a great, great product. But if I were going to pick something like that, I would probably go with uh, Affinity uh, Affinity uh, Designer. Uh, I think Affinity Designer is like thirty five dollars, and I think that it's much more actively developed. Um, but uh, no, I, I own a Corel product. I own Corel Painter, um, but I haven't updated it for two years now because I find Rebel to be more satisfying. Just the same idea, uh, but uh, still a good product. So I, 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 I've been buying Corel Painter since it came in a can. At least have a painter's can, and that was the the uh, thing that it, that uh, packaging it came in. Looks like using version three of Juggernaut, uh, download version eight. Um, I, I don't know. I haven't played. I just downloaded version eight today. Actually, I just haven't played with it. Uh, is it in this list somewhere? Let me refresh my list. I may have started comfy before I, uh, they're going to end painting. Well, I thought I had it down here, but, uh, I did download it, but I, maybe I just didn't drag it into the, the folder before the show, but yeah, I, I, I think it's a great model. Uh, it's It's got a nice uh, finished look to it, which is what I'm kind of looking for. Uh, again, I'm not into photorealism. Um, that's not what I do with this product. It's not, not what inspires me. You you know, whatever inspires you, uh, this inspires me. I, this one especially, just love, love this one. Uh, and I like the the first one as well um, that we had. But the, these these are fantastic to me. Uh, so now what I'll do is I'll take one of these and I'll roop my wife's face into it because I think that's really kind of fun. Um, using the beta test is Corel software. I get the full package of 32 CDs. Yes, I remember Photoshop coming on a bunch of uh, three and a half inch floppies at one point. <laughs> well, I'm old, apparently. Anyway. Well, guys, it's been great today. What a fantastic group today, too. Um, again, thanks uh, to Pina Design for uh, the gift of the five. And we've got David West who joined today and Charles Hagen and Alan Thoris. You guys are welcome. Uh, so remember, all this stuff, uh, go into the community area on YouTube. I don't use uh, uh, I don't use Patreon, although I'm thinking about I used to have a Patreon account and I might fire it back up again because I think it's easier on you guys to find this stuff. But I would love you to tell me what you want. Like, if you're going to support the show, tell me how I can make it easy on you, right? Uh, so it's uh, obviously really important to me to make sure we got these things the way that you need them. Um, so I appreciate you guys so much. I uh, got a, your daughter got a kick uh, when you incorporated the photo of her. Yeah, the, that roof is fantastic. But I'll tell you what, that was a bear to set up. So if you haven't done that, um, the... Uh, yeah, setting up the roof is, is fantastically difficult because you have to install the C Sharp development environment in order for it to work. Uh, your Coil Draw came with the first CD drive. Yeah, that's uh, that's a while ago. I say I got my painter's can around here somewhere still. Uh, and then my painter XL came out with a really nice box. But uh, I again, I like all of them. I, you can't really see my Windows start menu, but my start menu has Krita, Coral Painter 2021 was the last one I paid for. Um, Rebel 5. And then ZBrush, which I also use for some other stuff that's unrelated to what we do here. There's a lot of software that I use that I don't know if the channel would like me to cover at some point. Um, because I use like Lightburn for my laser cutter. Um, that's probably a different thing. I'll probably just do that as uh, as another thing. But 
all of these tools are influenced by my knowledge of AI right now. Like my ability to brainstorm is using those tools. That's what I use AI for. Uh, I'm not letting it kind of be, this is not the end. Like this is not the end. Like I will take this and I will do something with it. So, um, because it's just awesome. I love the use of watercolor here. So, and I like the pose, I like the half lid. Remember, this was a fixed seed. Isn't that too cool? This was a fixed seed up to a point. I don't think, uh, actually, I think these all were fixed seed at that point. Light burn. Yeah, I do. I have light burn. I've got ZBrush. I have Coral Substance Designer, Coral Substance Painter. I use Blender a lot as well. Uh, so all those tools are things that I could put on the channel, but I don't want to junk up the channel either. It's like maybe a live stream. I'll do like a Blender live stream some point uh, because there's a lot of stuff that uh, I, I use. Uh, use of vids for photography and software would be nice. Yeah, I, I do a lot of photography. So but my, speaking of which, next week I will not be here. I will be in, uh, I'm speaking at a conference in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, so Saturday, actually, we're going to do the Bourbon Trail because I've never done it before. So we're going to be there a day early. Uh, so I won't be there. I won't be live streaming. You know, I might live stream from the Bourbon Trail. I don't know where we'll be, uh, but it won't be this and it won't be long. Uh, it'll be kind of fun. Maybe I'll make it members only if you guys care to see it. I can see the group I'm with and what have you. Uh, I'll just do it from my phone. But um, that's me imaging USA. So that is a, that's probably the largest photography conference in the nation. Uh, and I'll be at that. So I'll be speaking there on AI. Uh, and then uh, from that point, I'm headed to uh, Orlando, Vermont, Arizona, Chicago, uh, Texas. I'm in Texas twice, actually. Uh, and I've got a couple other conferences that I'm going to and speaking at. So I'll let you guys know when those are happening. If you happen to be in those towns, uh, let's catch up, do have a beer. Like that would be fantastic. I've seen members of this channel. I'll, I'll let you guys know where I am so we can meet up and that'd be fun. Uh, but yeah, so I will not be around next weekend. I'll be in Kentucky. So it'll be a hell of a lot warmer than it is here. Uh, at least I think we're supposed to get 30, maybe 35 or 36 degrees Fahrenheit today, which means that we can actually melt some of the what, 15 inches of snow that I have on the ground, which was a bear to shovel. <laughs> but anyway, hey, thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. I don't really have anything else to cover on this topic uh, or the any other topics I've been randomly talking about. But I appreciate you so much today. And Pina, thanks again for, for the gift of the five memberships. That was awesome. Um, and again, David and David West and uh, Charles Hagen and Alan Thoris. You guys, thank you so much. I hope I'm pronouncing your names right. And Mohammed, I'm glad that you're able to enjoy the um, the membership because you can't get it in Egypt. So I uh, really appreciate that. Uh, they're working on, I guess YouTube's working on the ability for us to be able to gift memberships, but I don't think it's... Um, the ability to get them to specific people. I think I can just get them to the stream in general. Um, I haven't played with that yet. We'll have to figure out how exactly that works, but uh, at some point we'll get a chance to try it. Uh, maybe we can host some someday in Egypt. That would be fantastic. I wanted to go to Egypt forever. Like I would love to, love to. Really, be really neat. Yeah, a while for a while there, I could. I knew some Farsi and some Erdu and some uh, uh, Arabic, but uh, that was a long time ago. That's a that's a different life. Uh, I was a security physicist for a while, so it was a different different world. But, well, things have changed, haven't they? Like all the things you look back in your life and go, wow, the things that I thought I was going to do with my life and where I am now is a very different thing. But it's varies from decade to decade, right? Uh, what you're doing now is not necessarily what you're going to be doing 10 years from now or even five years from now. You never know. But you guys are on the bleeding edge of this AI thing for sure. And I, you know, obviously being able to do comfy and understand how this stuff fits together. You know, that's why comfy made this right is so he could understand how stable diffusion actually worked and not just type in a prompt, check a couple boxes, add some numbers and then hit prompt. You have to hook this together, which I think obviously helps you learn this uh, a lot, a lot better. So, all right, guys, you take care. You have a safe weekend and uh, you know, stay warm and have fun and play around with this and leave me some comments and let me know what you think. And again, I uh, appreciate the thumbs up on the videos, uh, any of them that you've watched, that you actually enjoyed. I really appreciate it. So oh, you're going to be a medieval historian. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, you look back. Huh, that That's uh, that's a pretty interesting topic right there. We'll have to do, we'll have to go off on the deep end with some of these uh, live streams because they're just fun. And I, I, when it gets warmer out, um, I'm actually making, uh, I'm, I'm getting them. I have several 3D printers. I have SLA printers. Uh, and regular 3D printers, but the design of that is a different thing. Hey, well, awesome. Look at that. Is it Josie or Jose? I can't tell. Um, I don't know. 
Well, welcome to the channel. Channel, channel sponsor. Awesome. I love it when people join during during the stream. That's very satisfying. People tip during the stream too, which is an, is also a rare bird, um, but that's pretty neat. That. But hey, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. We'll do something fun. I'll just um, I might do live streams a little more often when they're not maybe AI related, and I'm just working in Lightburn, for example, because I'm making something for my laser cutter. Or um, last yes, I was working in Blender quite a bit. Uh, to uh, I'm working on some earring designs actually, so I make earrings for my wife, just like a fun thing, and for friends. Uh, just kind of something fun to do. But again, using AI to get inspiration for these is kind of a fun thing. So awesome. All right, you guys, take care. Have a great weekend and stay safe and stay warm. And I'll catch you guys next time. Mm -hmm.